we're going to take this fat and turn it into usable lard for an entire year in our busy household. It's a busy work day here on Riverbend. I wanted to bring you guys along because today we have a major project. I do this project once a year, ideally if I can get it all done in one day. And that is that we are rendering all of the lard from this year that we raised this year. Look at this, there's a box here, a box here, a big box there. They've been defrosting for several hours and we're going to take this fat and turn it into usable lard for an entire year in our busy household. Before we get started, I wanted to show you my lard setup. This is really important. Lard days can be really busy days, so you have to make sure you're all set up before you get going. First of all, we have our jars. We washed these last night, we got them all dried. I really prefer using pint-sized jars for my lard because they kind of sit on the kitchen counter for a while, kind of like butter. Like we bring out one jar and it sits there and then we use it for a while and before we can get to the next jar, sometimes it can be, you know, a week of using one jar. You know, lard is a fat, so it can start to go rancid if you're waiting too long to use it. So I really like to have the smaller jars so we can get through them more quickly because sometimes the quart jars just take too long for us to get through. But I ran out of these pint size wide mouth jars this year. I think I have them filled with pickles and other things still sitting on the shelf. We're gonna have to go with the less than ideal wide mouth quart jars but we've got them all ready to go. And then we have our grinder set up. Now you don't have to grind your fat for lard, but it does make a much better product. If you grind your fat, your fat will melt and, and turn into lard a whole lot faster. So it's a lot quicker of a project, even with the grinding step added in you also get a better return. So you get more usable lard for your fat with the smaller chunks. And I do know a lot of people who don't even bother to chop and they just throw the entire chunks of fat like this into their pan to melt. And that does work too, but again, you get a lot of waste and you get not as much usable product in the end. And then we've got our Bus tubs over here, we love these things. We use these every time we're dealing with fat. Abigail's getting them nice and clean for us. Thank you, Abigail. Yeah. And we're getting the rest of the kitchen cleaned up. I've got some good helpers today. Brianna's here helping. And then we're gonna get all of our pots going on the stove. So we're pulling out every single stock pot we have, which is three big ones. And I'm hoping we can do it all in one day. There's two different types of fat when it comes to pig fat that you wanna render into lard. And you have your back fat, and then you have your leaf lard or your leaf fat. And it's really important to keep the two separate because that leaf lard makes the best pastry dough. So that's really good. Today, we're starting with the back fat. Now we've got everybody set up in their stations. Rachel, thank you. What are you doing this morning? I'm chopping it so it fits into the grinder. Brianna, what are you up to? I've got to grind it down this to make it all nice and small. And it'll come right out there and into the tub. And then Abigail, what are you doing? I'm going to put it into the pot. You're going to put it into step. the pot. Okay, and then Mama, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm going to be responsible for the stirring and actually rendering it over in the stove. We're going to get a little bit of fat in each pot right now to start so we can just get a nice melted layer where we're really going to babysit it as the pan starts. And then as we get more and more in there, we can kind of step away a little bit and not worry about it 
so closely, we can let it cook for little bits of time. When you're first starting your lard, it's really, really important that you just keep saying to yourself, low and slow, low and slow. You just wanna make sure you're not scorching anything at the bottom of the pan. Don't put water in the bottom. That is the opposite of what you wanna to do to have a lard that can sit on your shelf for a year at a time. For the moment, we've got two pans started and we're keeping it stirred. And look at that. You're just looking to get a nice layer of melted fat across the bottom. All the first layer of fat has melted and so now we're ready to start piling in more fat into this pan. And we can be less and less careful as we get more and more melted fat down at the bottom. Keep stirring it regularly, but it's not gonna scorch as easily now that we have that nice layer down there. Box number two. Chibasa, you wanna touch it? See, it's just fat. What are you doing today? I'm going to get Abby's cousin Lana's too and mine. Then I'm going to come back in the kitchen and play. All right, sounds like fun. It will. Well, the girls are keeping the uh, lard going for a second and I thought I'd step away and switch a load of laundry. The first step of rendering lard is to get it melted all the way down. And this is really important because the point of rendering lard is that we're melting it and then we're gonna cook off all the other tissues, anything that's in there that's not pure fat. We're also gonna cook off any moisture or liquid would get, that would get in there because that liquid is what makes your lard go bad really quickly. It's the absolute enemy of long storing fat and we're going to strain it and we're going to let it cool in jars before we get it into storage. Lard can store on the shelf if you do a really good job rendering it and it will last for up to a year if you have a really nice cool location. I don't have a really nice cool location so what I tend to do is put um, a bunch of lard on the shelf and I use that first and then I put the rest of it into the freezer to get me a little bit longer. This is the last of last year's lard so I'm doing this just in time. I'm almost out of lard so good thing we're rendering. Uh oh look I'm getting behind on my job. Here we go. I hoped that we would get all of the back fat in the two pots so that we could have the third pot just for the leaf lard, but I don't think that's gonna happen. We still have about half of the second box to do and you can see the pots are starting to fill up. We've got a little more room in this really big one, but you always have to remember, especially if you're cooking on a gas stove, that this is boiling fat. So you want to leave yourself some room at the top of your pot, like don't overflow it or overfill it because this is gonna have to boil and boil pretty hard for a while. And you don't want a kitchen fire, a fat fire with this much fat, that would be really, really dangerous. But look at this right here, you guys. You can see the little bits of stuff that are coming to the top. This is what is known as cracklings. Now they're not ready yet, they haven't cooked enough but you can see they're tiny. And that's because we're grinding the fat. So we're making really, really efficient use of all of that fat. And it's really getting all of the lard out of it. The problem is, is that if you've ever had fresh cracklings, you know that they are an absolute treat. And my kids love these things. I wanna make sure I get some crackling. So we're actually gonna hand chop just a little bit of the lard at the very end so that we can have some nice sized cracklings. We'll salt them and just eat a little bit fresh.
You can see this one will only be about a third full, but that's fine. This one is cooking away right now. It's probably gonna have to cook for, I'd say 45 minutes or so to make sure everything's cooked down really well. If you look at this leaf lard, you can see it's very globby in shape. It is not the long, thin, straight, like very rectangular shape. And that's good. That's exactly what we're looking for. Leaf lard is coming off from around the organs, the internal organs, like the kidneys in that area. And so it's kind of a lot globbier in shape. It's gonna be a lot softer to work with. This is still really frozen, which is really helpful when you're grinding fat. If it gets too warm, it can really jam up the grinder. We found it's best if you let it defrost for several hours, but not completely. That way it's frozen enough that it's grindable. Just like the blind man, I wander alone. Worries and fears I claim for my own. Just like the blind man, the dark give back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. It's really close to coffee break. Coffee break? Do yeah. you drink coffee? No, you guys do. Oh, we do. What do you want to do at coffee break? Eat snacks. Eat snacks. Oh, what kind of snacks are you going to have at coffee break? Uh, an apple. An apple, yum. Okay, sounds good. We're getting close. It's easy to get lard on everything on a on a lard day. It's all over our hands. I think we've done a good job on the floor. It's not on the floor yet, but it's definitely on the camera screen. <laughs> Is that the end of it? Yep. So all the lard is now ground? Yep. Wow. We're gonna get done with this project really quickly. It's not even coffee break. It's not even 10.30 in the morning yet. And we have the all the fat ground. We've got three pots of back fat or regular everyday lard going. And it's actually progressing really, really well. And then we've got two or one and a half big tubs of lard over here. This is the leaf lard. So we'll do that next as soon as these pots are ready. But I wanted to show you guys really fast. Remember how I told you that we wanted to boil it until the bubbles stop coming so quickly? This is that last pot that I did. So I started this last and you can see it's really bubbling pretty hard still. But look at this one over here. Now it almost looks like I have the heat down lower but that's not true. The heat's up the same as it was before. It's just starting to boil off all of the liquids, all of the impurities. And so what you're ending up with is just fat in there. So it's bubbling less. And before long, it's gonna pretty much not bubble at all. Here's that other pot, same thing. It's starting to reduce its bubble, not because I've turned the heat down, but because it's getting closer to done. Now remember how we added in those last little bits of cracklings, the big ones? You can see the difference. These little tiny things that are in the pot, I can almost not even scoop them up. That's the cracklings that are left over from the ground fat. These big guys are the cracklings that are left over from the nice hand chopped fat. We're making such a good use of our fat by having it ground. You actually get a ton more lard but you don't get the good crackling so we're gonna let these guys cook a little bit longer and we're gonna go take a little break oh it's nice to get outside that kitchen was getting really really humid and very hot <laughs> hey look who's coming they must have figured that it was coffee break all right you guys ready for a coffee break yeah. Yeah. all right all the cows got out all the cows got out what happened with the cows? They stepped over the fence and it wasn't on. Oh, because you guys were working on it? Yeah. And so they figured it out and they stepped right over it. Mm -hmm. All right, time for a break. Let's go. We've got cookies for you. <laughs> oh, 
Luffy. You're such a silly guy. You're too sophisticated for that sort of stuff, huh? Yeah, you are. Hey, Gussie. <laughs> Mm. Oh, oh, ho, ho, ho. Mm. oh, 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 Gus just loves his rubs. Oh, these are the pressed flowers, huh? When did you do these? Last um, summer. Last summer. Mm -hmm. Just get them ready to use for some art or something. Yeah. Yeah. Color. Do some coloring. Yeah. All right. Monkeys and butterflies. Back to work. <laughs> You're gonna get this all cleaned up. Yep. Yay. Put away. It's gonna take a lot of, I see you've got really hot water. <laughs> and I think that's good. Hot water and soap and all of the cleaning things. So that's really good. I've turned this off for a little bit because I don't like walking out of the kitchen with fat cooking. But you can see now that the bubbles have died back completely because there's no heat on it, you can see what it's starting to look like. And you can see it starts to take on this yellowish color and that's normal. It's gonna come clear when we're done with it. But right now, because there's still some of those meat particles, some of that tissue in there, it takes on that kind of golden brown of that starting to cook. Here's the other one, almost done. And here's that most recent one you can see it's not nearly as far along and it's still kind of a yellow color and not that golden brown. We're gonna turn them all back on and we're gonna get ready to strain out the cracklings. Probably in about 10, 15 minutes, these will be ready to come out. Okay, the fat has all come back up to a full temperature and take a look at this. This is that younger one, still boiling, although that's decreasing a bit, but look at how still this is. You can see there's little tiny bits of bubbles happening, but it has decreased bubbling significantly. Now take a look at those cracklings. You can see they're starting to turn a little bit of a golden brown. We are really, really close to removing them. We're ready to scoop out the cracklings, but the first thing we always need to do when we're scooping anything out of a pot of fat is turn off all the flames on the stove. It's just really important. Oh, ho, ho. these are gonna taste so good. We're just gonna sprinkle them with a little bit of salt and let them cool for just a minute because they are really, really hot right now. And then they'll be ready to nibble on. Now we got all the big ones off. Let's scoop all the way down to the bottom of the pot. Oh, and you can see all those little teeny cracklings. We wanna pull as many of those off as we can right now without getting too worried about it. I'm just using a pretty big frying spider. I'm just gonna let it drain a little bit and then put it right into a bowl here. Some people squeeze all of the fat out of these and then they'll put them into small portions in a freezer bag and then use them throughout the year to flavor their, um, their cornbread or different things like that. They are incredibly rich, so you can't eat too many of them, but they do have a lot of flavor in there. They're actually really good. You could put them in things like chili. Okay, we're ready to move on to the next step here of the Lord, but I wanted you to see what I'm seeing here. And this is that first pot that we've pulled all the cracklings out of, or at least all the big pieces of it. Look at how we are getting no more big bubbles. None of the big boiling bubbles. Look over here. See those still have big bubbles happening and definitely over here we've got big bubbles happening. Those big bubbles tell you that there's moisture still in their impurities. So we want those to be all the way gone. And as soon as we see them all the way gone, we are ready to go ahead and pull this off and strain this. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat off right now. And I wanna show you my setup that I have here. I have my good stainless steel canning funnel. You really do wanna use a metal funnel for this. This is incredibly hot. You do not wanna use anything that has plastic or dyes or anything like that. This is what we use for milk filters for when we're filtering out the milk. You could use a coffee filter, you could use some cheesecloth, but you wanna make sure whatever it is has no color dye in it because it will strain out that dye because it's so hot. Over this, I'm gonna put a little bit coarser of a filter 
This is a metal filter. Again, you don't want plastic, you don't want nylon. This will melt those nylon filters. And that's just to get out the bigger chunks so I don't go through as many of the paper filters as I would otherwise. Why this is really, really hot, we're gonna go ahead and give it a really quick wipe down on the rim and then get a canning flat and a ring on here. We're not actually canning these, but these will seal down because this is so incredibly hot right now. So you have to make sure that you wipe your rim with a little bit of vinegar to get any excess fat off there that would keep it from sealing. And then set it aside to cool. It's gonna need to sit really still for about 12, maybe 16 hours. Okay, you guys, you wanna come test out the cracklings? They might be hot, so be careful, okay? Okay. Toasty on the inside. Mm. They're really, really good. Really good? Mm. They kinda of like flake and fall apart. And they're oh. really, really hot, so be careful. <laughs> Those are hot. Boys, cracklings! Cracklings, cracklings. What do you guys think? They're really good. Yummy? Yeah. Ooh, what do you think, Becca? Yummy. Hot? Yeah, uh -huh. yummy. They're good. They're good, you like them? Yeah. It's two o'clock in the afternoon and we have gotten done with all the back fat and we've got most of the leaf lard into the pot now. And I wanted to show you how much back fat lard we got something like 42 quarts of everyday lard. Now I wanna point out something though. I am sure you guys can see the difference in color. They are going to get significantly different in color from how they are now as they cool down. They're gonna to go to like almost completely white. They'll be a really creamy white. Here's the current lard that we're using that we rendered last year. It's gonna turn into that kind of opaque white as it cools overnight. But you can see that starting off, I've got three different colors of lard here. This one's nice and white and clear. This one's much more yellow. And this is actually, I don't know if you can see it, this one's actually a little bit lighter yellow than this one. This has to do with how long I cooked each one. This is about ideal. You really want this. This one, I kinda got busy and I forgot what I was doing and stop paying attention and I overcook the cracklings in there. So this is still great lard. It's just gonna have a lot more of a roasty flavor when I use it. So I'm probably gonna really use that for vegetables and meat. And this one's somewhere in between. This is gonna be really good lard for everything. Really want to aim towards this, but if you end up with that, it's still gonna taste great. have all of the leaf lard melted in the pot and we're just waiting for it to cook down just a little bit more before we strain it out. I'm, I'm being really careful with this one making sure that I don't overcook it like I did that other batch. We want this stuff ready to go into holiday pastries like pie crust. Oh it's gonna be so good. I think we are ready to go ahead and get this completely strained and in its jars. We're gonna wrap it up. It's almost 3.30. Look, we got it all done. That's 13 pints of leaf lard and what's that? 14 quarts of the leaf lard. That's on top of the 41 quarts 
of regular everyday lard that we already did and oh my goodness I am so glad to have this done a lot of times I break this up and I do like one pot at a time and just make it really stretch but you know you get everything really dirty you get it kind of greasy it took us about seven hours altogether, but not all of that was active work. Some of that was when it was just cooking down. Now this is gonna cool overnight and it's gonna end up being really, really nice and creamy white. Now that is a lot of lard. That should get us through a whole year. And look at all of them. They are all nice and solid. This is that leaf lard. Look at how white this is. Here, let's go compare this to the other ones. This is that everyday lard from the back fat, and you can see the difference there. The everyday lard is not quite as white. It's close, and definitely that stuff that I overcooked is not quite as white. Now these are ready to go down into the cool basement. Some of them I'm gonna put in the freezer, and they will last for the whole year till I need them. But you guys, it's not that hard to make your own lard. So make sure you check out this video right here on step-by-step -step directions on how to make your own lard.